well, Taylor, if I get a leopard later as well, it'll be an incredible start to the day. So hopefully that does happen. We'll definitely go looking for little Hosanna a bit later and see what we can find. But you can see we've just repositioned ourselves. It's not the best view because we have to look through a lot of vegetation to see the entrance to this hole from the side. But you can see the one little cub is busy suckling away there. Now it's not to say that the other cub isn't there. He could be just inside the hole and has already suckled and is now having a nice nap after seeing mom and would have been quite excited and played around quite a bit and maybe got a nice full tummy and has gone inside the warm termite mound to be able to have a little rest. So it's no concern at this stage. I would have just thought that both of them would have been out, especially if one was suckling. Oh, you've got yourself into a tangle, little one. What are you doing? Hyena <laughs> you know, cubs are probably one of the funniest creatures to watch. They just seem to be up to something all the time. Even suckling, they seem to get themselves into awkward angles. You can see feet are in all directions, but it does look very comfortable. It's kind of got itself on the side, and when there's not another sibling there, it actually makes it much easier for one of these to suckle. You can see they can take over and lie there and get as much nutrients as they want. Are you battling to stand up? <laughs> Very, very cute indeed. Now, that milk will be vitally important for these little ones. It's not going to be too much longer that they're going to get access to it. As soon as they start getting to sort of six, seven months old, they start to be completely weaned. And so it's important that they suckle as much as possible now because that milk is nutrient rich and it's really going to be very sustaining for them and make them sort of get bigger and healthier very, very quickly. So you need to take advantage of the milk and that's why they feed quite ferociously when they're like this. Also, they, unlike the adults, are not moving from the den. So they're not able to pick up little scraps here and there and constantly feed themselves. And so when it's time to drink, they become a bit gluttonous and I'm sure during the nights they had a long night of being on their own. They're quite hungry now and so they're busy wolfing down as much milk as possible. But it's really good to see that they are still at this den. I was getting a bit despondent by it all. But when Taylor said yesterday that she had tracks for the little ones, then at least we knew that those little ones were still alive and must be somewhere close by. So I'm quite glad that they're still at this den and that we have an access to it. It does really make life a lot easier. And especially with the weekend coming up, it is Mother's Day weekend. So it's really good that we have Ribbon and her cubs. And hopefully they'll put on a show for the TV shows that we do have coming up. So... It'll be really nice if they are out there. Are you not comfortable, little one? Seems to be tossing and turning an awful lot this morning. I wonder if there isn't maybe some sort of parasite that's, that is giving them a few issues and that's why it's wiggling. There's often fleas and varying other things inside there that sometimes can cause a bit of itching and that's maybe why it's moving so much. Now, Seek Truth, you saying or asking, is this the same den? Yes, it is the same den. It's just we're at a very different angle. Normally, Ribbon actually lies away from that hole, and she'll spend time in the more sort of open areas, and the cubs come out, but it is the same den. It just looks very strange from this angle because of all the trees. If I drive around a little bit, you'll see that it is indeed the same one. Now, in the background there is a marula tree where we had Shongile the other day, so it is the same den that they spend a lot of time at. It's just that there's been a sort of quite a lot of disturbance here. We've had Shongile arrive, so that would have been a scent of a leopard. There's been quite a few elephants and buffalo that have walked through here. And then we had most of the members of the clan arrive the other day. And Byron was here when that happened. And there was lots of vocalizing and lots of commotion. And since then, it's been a bit quiet at the den. We've sort of struggled to find them here. And so maybe there was just a bit of sort of commotion and they became a little bit more shy of what was going on. And now sort of everything's calming down again. They back out and you can see Riven is far more relaxed with things. The other day when I came here she just got up and moved off. She didn't even stay at the den so it's nice to see her sticking around and feeding the cubs and taking it a little bit easy and not too phased by our presence. But you can see that little cub is perfectly positioned. Isn't that cute? And it's getting so spotty now. I remember when we first saw them they were those dark little black babies and they had no spots on them yet and now you can see quite a few spots coming out there's very little in the way of black just the legs are solid black color now so they are getting quite big quite quickly and one came out just now when we first arrived and it was actually standing quite close to the car and i'm very surprised at how tall they are already their legs have gotten much longer they no longer have those short little stubby legs that run around 
they've got now these more sort of hyena looking legs where the front legs are nice and long and they're starting to look quite big and sort of strong so it's really good to see that they're growing so nicely and getting enough nutrition and enough food to sustain themselves. Ah, Samantha, you're wondering if a hyena would eat a carcass of one of their own. Well, I've seen them eating a carcass of a hyena. I'm not, I'm not sure if it was one of the clan members, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of the lower-ranking individuals or males ended up eating a carcass of one of their own. I've never heard of a mother eating its babies, but it, I suppose it's possible. Um, I think a lot of that kind of stuff we, we don't see, particularly when it comes to young ones. Um, but... As far as I've, I have seen a hyena eating another one, but I can't remember, as I say, I, I didn't know whether they were clan mates at the time, so it could be that they was part of the same clan or from a rival clan and they were just a dominance display and feeding off the other one. But they some, sometimes don't eat too much of it. And the one that they, I saw them eating, there was kind of, they just ate over the rib cage area and then they left it and it just rotted away. So I don't think it's their favorite thing to do. I think it's more just a show of dominance to another one and sh to show that we have killed this particular individual and, and that they, you know, they kind of sending out a very clear message that they are the more sort of dominant of that particular area. And you can see the sun is just coming up and the little rays of light are now starting to come towards the hole so I wonder if it won't actually drive them in so Laura you're wondering if hyena babies suckle in their sleep well you can see that little one is eyes are closed it's not sleeping though it's it's still awake and every now and then it's moving but they do go into a sort of rest position eyes closed and they then just suckle away it's much like a human baby I would imagine in the same way so it's not that they're actually sleeping it's just that they're in a comfortable position and they are fairly happy with where they are and so the, the eyes start to close and they then end up getting the milk that way and you'll find once they finish drinking they wake up quite quickly stand up and then they'll wander off to an area where they'll actually go for a proper sleep so they're not actually sleeping while they're suckling I wonder where the second one is So, Shelley, the gender of the cubs is difficult, especially from an angle like this. You can see the tail is all tucked up in there and it becomes almost impossible to see any sort of physical form. Um, so, no, at this stage I, we can't. Um, I don't think any of us actually have successfully sexed these two yet. Um, but as soon as they stand up and they move around and you can see the two of them, then yes, we would probably be able to sex them at this age. They are starting to get big enough that we could potentially do that. Um, but at this, from this angle and, and this particular sort of position that it's sitting in, there's really no way to tell if that's a male or a female. It is sort of all tucked up and curled up. You can see it's pulling its little bum in now, so <laughs> there's really no ways to see the sort of genital area and see whether or not it's a male or female. Right. Now... Unfortunately, we're probably going to have to leave these hyenas fairly shortly. There's quite a few vehicles that would like to come and see them. It's been an absolute privilege to see them this morning. So we're probably going to carry on and see if we can't find Hosanna. And while we do that, I believe Steph is out and about and would like to say good morning from the Bushwalk team. <laughs>